Do you have a business that serves your local community? Are you trying to take your business to the next level? Do you struggle to understand your business numbers? Well, stop working harder thinking you're going to make more money. That's not how it works. Each week we go over how to understand and leverage your business numbers to not only create more sales, but more importantly, how to create more profits. Remember, it isn't about how much you sell. It's about how much you keep at the end of the day. My name is Tammy and I'm on a mission to help badass business owners like your yourself, put more money in your pocket. So whether you're a badass or a badass in the making, let's get this party started. Hey, badass business owners, welcome back to the show. It is Thursday. It means we're going to take a look at your numbers. Uh, today, I want to talk a little bit about your profit and loss income statement. Remember, this is the, uh, if you're new to the show, this is by far the number one piece of paper in your business that you need to look at. But it is also, unfortunately, by far the number one piece of paper that most small business owners uh, turn a blind eye to, don't look at, have never even seen, don't know what they look like. Uh, and I'm also finding a growing number of you um, are being misled as to what that is by people that you're paying money to. Uh, make sure that when you hire someone to do your taxes and to do your bookkeeping, ask them to give you a uh, profit and loss income statement. And you might be surprised what they're giving you is not what an actual profit and loss is as much as it is the detail sheets that go along with it. Because the detail sheets are where it breaks down each item within that. So for example, under your cost of goods, let's just say you have a vendor, vendor W, and vendor W you buy stuff from every week. So they give you a sheet that lays all that out because they're taking that out of however you're giving it to them. Sometimes you give them bank statements or different things that they input in. Well, a profit and loss is a one page income, profit and loss income statement. It's, it's a roll up of all of that information. So if they just hand you a bunch of sheets with a bunch of detail from your stuff, they're actually not giving you a profit and loss statement um, because it is a one page roll up summary. So make sure that you're getting that. Uh, also, it's important that you know what's on that, which is why I've created several different things to help you, whether it's on the YouTube channel. I just wrote this long uh, blog post that explains a PNL and what's on it. Uh, I even turned it into a little guide that you can download that has some, it, it explains it, what you should get off of it, and also. Uh, uh, what am I thinking of? Some examples of that. And by the way, that's at localsmallbusinesscoach.com slash P as in Paul, as in profit, right? And L as in loss. So profit and loss, but it's just P and L just to make it nice and easy for you guys. But if not, just go to localsmallbusinesscoach.com under resources. It's right there. Um, the whole point of what I'm trying to say is it's really important that you're getting the right piece of paper because if they're if they have any kind of, uh, what am I thinking of? Uh, if they have any kind of program, computer program that they're putting their stuff into, trust me, they can pull up a profit and loss statement. Uh, for those of you that are doing it on your own, you want to make sure that you create whether it's a spreadsheet or something else that you can follow along the same things. Because remember, we have our most important calculation that I've told you guys you need to understand. Go ahead and say it along with me. Sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals your profit. You have to memorize that. That's like the one thing I want you guys to memorize. Sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals your profits. That's the flow of money through your business. It's your money coming in, your sales, then your sales going out, your, your money going out is either going to go to the cost of goods in your business or to the operational expenses to keep it running. And then at the end of the day, you have your profit. Uh, so it's really important you understand that. But your PL is there, which is the top reason I wanted to talk about today. Your PL is not just so that you can watch the flow of money in and out of your business. One of the most exciting things that you can do with your PL once you understand that is you can use it to create more business and to create more profit. Because your PL is like reading a book. Believe it or not, it will tell you things about your business that you need to know. But it all comes down to uh, how well you learn to interpret it. All right. And there's some little tweaks that you can make to your profit and loss statement that is actually going to help you out. And I call it categories. You can actually break things down. So, for example, 
if we know that sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profit, well, let's start with that top one. Let's talk about sales for a minute. Well, one way you can do it at minimum is to lump all of the sales in your business into one category. And you can say, hey, these are my sales. I did $20,000 in sales. But the more sophisticated you become and the better you become at understanding your PNL and your profit and loss income statement, the more you'll realize that, hey, I wonder if I broke my sales into smaller chunks, could that help me understand and grow my business? And the answer is, hell yes, it will. So for example, let's just do a small couple of items. What if you had a business that did residential and commercial? Well, at minimum, you should have your sales broken down into residential and commercial. If you do monthlies versus uh, one-off things, one-time things where you go into a place. That's another way to break it down. If you have a brick and mortar store, you offer different categories within your business. You can break those down. For example, when I had my ice cream shop, I had cups and cones. I had sundaes. I had drinks. I had different categories for different things. You can do the same thing in your brick and mortar business. The reason that's important for you to break those categories down is now you can sit there and you can say like if we're having a coaching moment and we're talking, one of the things that I ask people, for example, is to say they would do residential and commercial will go nice and easy is I'll go, how much of your business comes from your residential side and how much comes from your commercial side? And you know what I get? Uh, wild ass guesses. Yep. They pause. They think, ah, uh, yeah, I would probably say most of it is this or maybe 20%. And then you get the actual numbers and they're not even close. They're, you know, it's an educated guess, okay? But it's still just a guess. Whereas if you had it broken down on your profit and loss, you could actually know that. Then what's cool about it is if you broke down your cost of goods as well, you see your expenses are broken down, believe it or not. But for some reason, we don't break down our cost of goods and we don't break down our sales as much as we should. Because here's the thing, let's just say you did 40% residential and 60% commercial, but then we also broke down our cost of goods for each of those areas. Well, here's the thing, if you did 40% residential and you did it at a cost of goods of say 30%, meaning 30% of each dollar went towards cost, but yet your commercial side was 40% cost of goods, then you're going to realize that you actually start off making more money on the residential side than you do on the commercial side. Usually it could be the other way around because when you throw in the payroll and stuff like that. But the main point is you won't know what's a good category for you to grow if you don't break it down. You know, a, a, an example I use often is when Baskin Robbins decided to go into soft serve. Well, that's not what Baskin Robbins is known for. So if you track the the category of soft serve, you see that it gets dwarfed in uh, sales. But yet, when you look at advertising and how much of the advertising was put towards soft serve, it was a ridiculous number. So here's something that does three, four percent of the business, and yet it's getting fifty percent of the advertising dollars. That's just dumb, okay? Uh, because even if you were to triple the number, it's still a low number, okay? $100 times three is still $300. I'd rather sit there and try to just raise a category that's much higher, even by half a percent, it's still gonna make way more dollars than something that doesn't. So that's why having it broken down on your PNL is actually very helpful to you. So step one is to make sure you're getting a profit and loss income statement period, whether it's done through, if you do your own bookkeeping, whatever system you use should be able to print that up for you. You may have to create your own spreadsheets if you're going to do it. But if you pay somebody who, who does a service and provides a service for you, they should be able to get it for you as well. Now, if you only pay someone to do your taxes, they're probably not going to have a PL for you. They'll probably just have a breakdown of where they've stuck everything. Now, the way a uh, your taxes are paid might be a little different than the way that your profit and loss is structured. They're very similar. They're going to be 80% about the same, but for taxes, they're going to try to maximize your return. So they're going to do some different things with that. But so step one is that you need to get your hands on a profit and loss statement. If you have no clue what this is, please start at the beginning go get the resources. They're in the show notes. They're over on the website. We, uh, they're on the YouTube channel, whatever the case may be. I need you to start 
understanding what this report is in the first place. And then as you become more sophisticated, I really want you to think about how can you break down those categories in both your sales and in your cost of goods, because it's going to be able to help you as you learn how to understand profitability and what percentages come off of each one and what category is making you more money than something else. And I I know this is going to sound really foreign to a lot of folks as I'm going through this, especially if you've never looked at it. I just want you to understand, I go, if you walk away with nothing else, is to understand this. Your profit and loss statement is the key to you really maximizing the profits you make in your business. Even if you don't want to grow to having, you know, five, 10 employees, that's okay. Even if you just want to stay a single person running your business, that's okay as well. But remember, you're exchanging time for money. And if you only make enough money to to pay you a wage, then guess what? You just bought yourself a job. What I want you guys to do is to create a business that allows you to make even more money than you would if you were an employee. And I also want you to stop chasing every single dollar. I want you to stop working 70, 80 hours a week when you can make the same amount of money in less hours. Okay. So if nothing else resonates you with you, other than the fact that you can make more money working less hours, trust me, All of the answers that you need are in your profit and loss statement. So just make me a commitment that if you have yet to do this step, you're going to start doing it. In the show notes, there's several different uh, ways that you can get to some of the different resources that have to deal with this. But I really, really, really need you to start understanding your business numbers because it is the difference between you working hard, busting your ass every single day and making the same amount of money you'd make working for somebody else versus making money that is above and beyond what you would make as an employee and you're not having to work 80 hours a week, okay? I know some of you guys do it 40 hours a week. Some of you are working a regular job and doing your business. Some of you guys are working 70, 80 hours, ridiculous numbers of hours and you're having to do that in order to survive and it's just because you're working on the wrong things. Believe it or not, your profit and loss statement, your PL, your income statement, they go by all these different names. Trust me, they have hidden information inside of them. You just need to learn how to read them. This is not about math, people, okay? Yes, you have to know a couple little things, but guess what? You manage to get through life knowing that one plus one equals two, all right? You learn that five times three is 15. I'm, I'm not gonna ask you to do anything above basic, basic stuff. And believe it or not, they have these really cool things now that the, on your phone, there's a calculator built in. Okay, you don't even have to be a nerd and carry your calculator around. You carry it around every single day with you now in your phone. All right. So trust me, all I'm trying to do is to help you understand how to read it. Because once you learn how to read it, it's going to tell you everything you need to know. And it's not going to be about math. Um, so, all right, that's my rant for the day. I just want to make sure that you're, 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 you're looking at that piece of paper. You're making sure what you're getting from people is the exact form that you need. And if you ever, ever wonder if you have the right thing, I am okay with you emailing me, share with me what it is that you're getting. And I'll tell you, no, yes, maybe I've got people that do it all the time. It's Tammy at localsmallbusinesscoach.com. Tammy at T-A-M-M-Y at localsmallbusinesscoach.com. You know, it's in the show notes. Uh, Reach out to me and just say, hey, is this what I'm looking for? And I'll say yes or no. I have no problem with that. My mission here is one thing and one thing only, and that is to help you guys get on the road to being a very strong, successful business owner. All right, we'll pass the baton to someone else that's going to take you on how to create these multi-million dollar and everything else. But my main thing is how do I get you that 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 very strong foundation to to your business? And I'm telling you, knowing your business numbers is a huge chunk of that. All right, with that, I'm going to get out of here uh, because you know me, I go on my rants and I can feel one coming on and we don't want to do that. <laughs> All right, with that, I am out of here. Uh, you guys have a wonderful rest of the week and I will talk to you on the next episode. Bye for now. Hey, before you go, if you're looking to learn more about your business numbers, then check out the Know Your Business Numbers course, where we take a deeper dive into the key numbers, the calculations, the reports that will help you take your business to the next level. My mission is to help everyone love their business numbers. Yes, even including those of you that hate math. 
So much profit is hidden inside of your business numbers. And I want you to create some awesome profits. So check out the link in the show notes or head on over to the knowyourbusinessnumberscourse.com. Once again, knowyourbusinessnumberscourse.com. Come join me. Let's go ahead and work on building your profits.